This video was created by Your Future Is Our Business in partnership with the Santa Cruz County Office of Education for the Computer Science and Information Technology Week taking place from December 7th through 11th to provide access to a variety of activities exploring different areas of CS and IT. In this video, we will hear from Martin Vargas Vega about what it's like to be a software engineer. My full job title is I'm a software engineer and I work for a venture studio known as Superset for one of their companies called Hubu. Superset is just a, a group of individuals that want to create multiple companies at the same time. And Hubu is one of them. And Hubu is a, uh, a marketing tech company. So what that means is for anyone that wants to reach people on like Snapchat or Facebook or Twitter, we help them do that. So we help them kind of make that, that transition as easy as possible. I got involved in computer science through the digital nest. I um, mean, high school, I really was interested in a CS and wanted to take CS courses, but my high school at the time didn't offer any of those. And with the nest, they allowed me to kind of get my first foot in the door. It's just a place where you come and learn. Um, you can write a computer uh, to learn any tech skill that you like, whether it's photo editing, video editing, or web development, or just a place for you to come and do your homework. The education or experience you need to have varies. Um, I've worked with individuals that don't have a CS degree or that are self-taught, that they've learned everything through online content to uh, another growth area that is a sponsorship from a company. So for example, what happened with me is I applied through a program through Adobe that helped fund my education um, to get oh, to a boot camp in San Francisco. I was there for three to three to four months. And then after that, I interned with them. So in my personal case, I don't have a formal CS degree. After high school, I, I thought about it. Um, usually, and hopefully now it's better. But at that time, in order for me to get it to a four-year university, I would have to do approximately like three to four years at a community college, and then another three years at a, a four-year. So in total, that would have been about seven years for me to, to try to become a software engineer. And at that time, I, I was like, you know what? It's, I, I value education because you have to do it to, to do this type of career but I chose the non-traditional route. And what that meant for me was I learned on my own, I, I searched for mentors and, re, and we're building projects along the way. And that it, there is a huge group of us. Uh, we're not, I'm not alone. Um, and eventually this is something you end up doing in your uh, work as well, where after you get the job, your, your learning doesn't stop. But just because you don't have a CS degree does not mean you shouldn't uh, try to be a software engineer. In order to be a software engineer, the skills that you'll need to know is some sort of a programming language, whether that's JavaScript or Python or Go or Java. Those are the most popular at the moment. You also really need to know is uh, how to communicate well, especially now, most of my work is online, just like everyone else's. But even before this, I would work with a lot of people online. So being able to communicate either through text or through video is something you really need to know how to do. The number one that I've used the most is being innovative uh, or to be innovative. And what that means is uh, everything that we do is new. Like, so, so far, like I, I said, we're going to start up. Uh, we don't have anyone to really look up to. Usually you can go on Google and say how to do X thing. So we are building X thing. We are building the thing that people want to build. Um, so we have to be really innovative. And the other one is being uh, empathetic to everyone. And what that means is uh, our work is hard and we all work really hard, but sometimes we are so much, we are in each other's face so much that we're like, we need time. Um, but the other one, uh, the biggest one out, uh, out of all of that is uh, problem solving. And meaning there's two kind of strategies that we tell our, anyone that joins our company is, are you asking the right question? And can we make this or remove this as a blocker? Like meaning, can I talk to someone for five to 10 minutes and can we realize that, hey, maybe this isn't a problem for us and we can t like, think about it later. Collaboration is super important because we, we, we work asynchronously. And what that means is that I could be working on part A and my partner's working on part B and we should meet at the same point and they, those things should work well together. But we have to make sure that any changes that we make along the way, that the other side is informed. Because if that doesn't happen, it'll just delay the entire process a lot more. Those are kind of the biggest ones that I use. A typical day for me, since uh, my company uh, specifically at startup, there is no typical day. Uh, sometimes, you know, I get to start work at my normal hours between eight and nine. Then I have a meeting with my entire team at 10. Around lunchtime, which is 12, we'll have an all company meeting. So everyone from across the state will meet up together. Uh, we'll just give each other updates. And then in the afternoon, it's a mixture of me 
trying to do something on code and try to find a solution for that, or me, you know, napping or trying to really not code. Um, so, and what that means for me is sometimes for most of us, we, when we're trying to solve a problem, it's better for us to go away. So that involves me like either stretching or going to the gym or something like that. And so that's a typical day for me. Um, but there's other days where it's just a 24 hour kind of frenzy of the world's on fire, we need to fix it and something, you know, all hands on deck. Um, so it varies from, <laughs> from day to day. So my top five would be uh, one to make sure that I'm always learning. And what that means is uh, since we're in a startup, we really wanna make sure that we're delivering our best products to everyone. And that means a lot of uh, educating myself on like industry standards and making sure we know what our competitors are doing. Uh, the second one would be uh, communicating with my team. So we have people that work in Boston and New York and also overseas. So making sure that everyone's on the same page, that's the second one. The third one is uh, reviewing everyone's work. So something that I didn't know before I started working here is that as a developer, uh, your work gets reviewed a lot and that's a really good thing. Uh, I know for me, I was always scared of getting my work reviewed, but it's really, really helpful. Uh, the fourth one would be to take care of myself. That's something that we say in our company a lot that um, we depend on each other to bring their best self. And if they need some time off, then they should do that. And the fifth one, you know, just have fun. <laughs> the challenges as a software engineer, um, or especially, especially as like a, a Latinx software engineer, is you are sometimes the only one of the, your culture or the person that you are. So what that means to me is a feeling of not you know, belonging there, or you, the thing that you don't think you belong there creeps up to your mind. But that's also empowering for me because I get to be uh, kind of like a figure to other people that want to be in part of this industry. And that's also what drives the other like, side of my work of being an advocate for more individuals of color, uh, for female engineers, and um, just for, you know, for that side of it. Being able to meet people from across this country. Before being a software engineer, I was very limited to maybe California and maybe Sacramento to LA. Um, and then before that, I would have never met anyone from like Boston or Philadelphia or New York. And now I communicate with them on a regular. So I really enjoy that. I'm a people's person. So I enjoy that part of it. The other one is being able to talk to uh, really high companies like <laughs> You know, I'd be cool to work with them at some point. And now I'm at the space where I can't. Everything in the future will be controlled through code in some way, shape, or form. Um, the users that use technology are very diverse, but the people that make that technology is not. So what I mean by that is uh, there's not a lot of Latinos or Latinx individuals. There's not a lot of Black individuals. And the same thing for uh, female engineers. They are not well represented in the technology that is literally innovating every day. Um, so it's important for individuals like myself to be part of that so we can create a better and sustainable world for our users and just anyone in, in the world. Um, the other thing is the economic part of it. Uh, as a software engineer, your salaries, you were paid really well um, and that has generational impact for your community, um, for your family. And um, you know, though that capital isn't being put to those communities. Um, so that's, that's why it's important to me that uh, I can do that for my community and for other individuals as well. So the trend that I'm seeing right now is a huge growth in social media marketing. Five years ago, someone would say, I'm a marketer. And they'd say, I know how to, I don't know, run an ad. But marketing and the social media marketing has changed dramatically. Marketing now means you're able to be on Snapchat, on Instagram, on TikTok as a form to promote your business. If you're not in that world that don't understand that, then you're losing a huge amount of clients and a huge demographic that could really, uh, you know, ingest your product. So knowing those things and knowing how to navigate those things are really, really important. The other thing is um, just uh, learning just a simple like scripting language, like JavaScript or stuff like that, to really automate the processes. Um, as you start going along, you'll realize, you know, like Google Calendar, that helps you, you know, schedule meetings, but then even to more of like, even social media posting, like automating that, that's a huge trend that people are doing by themselves. So, so social media is pretty much the biggest one.
Good advice that I can give to anyone that wants to get started is uh, look me up on LinkedIn or YouTube. Um, I'm creating content that individuals can follow as like a how-to. The other one is looking at uh, companies like or organizations like the Digital Nest. There's, um, I think it's called freecode.org. Uh, there's also Khan Academy. There's um, just a bunch of other education platforms where you can literally teach yourself anything online uh, by YouTube. And all you have to do is say how to code JavaScript in 10 minutes and just jump right in. Um, if you wanted to take it to the next level, look at your schools, anything that says coding, uh, a popular one in at least high school and middle school is Python. It's a very uh, easy to read language and it's very, very powerful. So I would recommend that as well. Um, and if you really wanted to push yourself, at least in this digital space, is making your own link tree. If you don't know what a link tree is, look it up. And it's all it is, is uh, when someone goes to a social media page, they go to a website and then it links to different things that you want to promote or do that. So it's a really, really easy project that could help you get started. Like if you're a high school student and you're, it's your last year and you're applying to a CS program and you're like, I have none of the requirements. I meet none of the mass requirements. I don't have any CS courses and I don't have any clubs that are even STEM. Totally fine, totally fine. Because you can then go to a community college of your choice. They will have entry level computer science courses and you will probably learn a lot more than you would have in that high school career that you had. Um, you know, don't let like a, a four-year degree define the fact that you can't be a, a, a software engineer. I don't know if I mentioned that. I was like, I'm a non-traditional software engineer. I don't have a CS degree. If I could make a pitch for why you should be a software engineer, the uh, you learn so much more beyond just the CS part of it. As me being a software engineer, it's allowed me to get introduced to the, the philanthropy side of, of the world. Um, a lot of the tech companies really want to promote themselves as giving and I've learned how to leverage those relationships to really give back to you know underprivileged communities like the Latinx community, the black community. Um, through an organization that I work with now, we've been able to give out $45,000 this year, which you know is amazing because I don't have $45,000 to give. <laughs> but collectively, we can do that. Uh, the other thing is you really realize that it's not, it's not as crazy as you think. Creating a, an Instagram is not crazy. It's not like, you know, brain surgery. Um, so creating those things and those things that will innovate in the future are very, very doable. It's just learning how to do it, you know. So the same thing as like riding a bike or learning how to swim. You know, if you ever feared that, think of the same thing as uh, coding. That you can really, really change the world just by learning a little bit about that.